Welcome back to another episode of the Young Guides Podcast. I'm Keaton, and this is... I'm Kyle. But first, a word from our partners. First up, we want to talk about Heather's Choice. If you go to the Heather's Choice website and use our code, theyoungguides15 at checkout, you can get yourself 15% off site-wide. So go check them out. We got packaroons for snacks. We got dinners. We got breakfasts. We got a bunch of new recipes coming out to you guys. So head on over to heatherschoice.com at checkout. Use our code, the young guides 15 and get you guys something for your next outdoor adventure. Awesome. For our next partner, we have lucky bug lures home of the bingo bug, zombie max fusion extreme lucky plug F bomb and pike bomb. They take conventional lures and change them up a little bit and it helps your fishing and your luck on the water go check them out www.luckybuglures.com go get yours today all right up next we have northern knits emily up here in anchorage knits wool hats and uh, distributes them through her social media platforms you can find her on facebook or on instagram her instagram account is northern dot underscore dot knits and uh, you can see some of the hats that she has in stock and order from there or you can kind of get an idea of what you want message her and you can set something up uh, to have a specific uh, pattern or color scheme that you want in your hat keaton and i both have one well uh, i actually have several <clears throat> keep you very warm they're very fashionable they look great they feel great You'll look awesome if you wear one too. Check her out, Northern Knits. Next up, we have a friend, Matt, at Alaska Rod Co. He just released a new lineup of rods for the 2022 season. They have a lineup of eight freshwater spinning rods with actions and power for anglers chasing big, aggressive fish. With lengths ranging from six foot to nine foot, there are plenty of options for various applications and style. In a world full of mass-produced rods, Alaska Rod Co. makes sure that rods and services provide what other brands cannot. Rods built and tested in Alaska. Matt also is coming out with a new line of fly rods. Alaska Rodco fly rods are built for harsh environments while maintaining the utmost level of craftsmanship. Right now, Alaska Rodco has nine foot fly rods ranging from five weights to eight weights. Ten foot single hand rods, switch and spay rods will be available late winter or spring. There's enough rod comings out there trying to build the next lightest and flashy rod. Alaska Rodco is here to build you a rod you can pass down generations. Fishing means many things to many different people. Alaska Rod Co. is honored to build you the ultimate tool that connects you to that meaning. If you want to learn a little bit more about Alaska Rod Company, go back and check our previous podcast. We asked him several questions about his rods, his warranties. Um, it does, he does a great job at explaining everything and covering everything about his company also if you have questions you can always dm him or dm us and we can get you going in the right direction so alaska rod co finally we want to say thank you for listening to another episode of the young guides podcast if you can head on over to apple Podcasts, leave us a review and a rating it helps us know that we're uh, doing this for the right reasons and you guys are giving us some great feedback already you can also head over to spotify they now have a rating feature on the podcast there so if you could let us know how we're doing that would be great it also helps you or excuse me helps us spread the word through you um but makes us pop up on the feeds um wherever you listen to podcasts a lot more if you give us a great rating and a great review you can also head to our website and contact us through that form. If there's anything that you think we should know about, if you want to be on our show or if there is something that uh, we need to work on, you can also find us on Instagram and same thing. Give us some feedback, drop us a message, and we will get back to you. With Instagram, make sure to also check our story. We uh, Before we do our podcast on Thursdays, we always have an option for you guys to ask questions to the people coming on our podcast. Um, and we, get, we post a lot of stuff that we like to get uh, viewers and people following us involved. So if you want to head on over, give us a follow and uh, 
start asking questions and join in on the fun on our Instagram page. Without further ado, here's the episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Young Guides Podcast. I'm Keaton, and this is... I'm Kyle, and on today's episode, we have a special guest. We have on Shelly Marshall. Um, Shelly is a marine biologist, an angler, and an artist. Um, She's really passionate about her conservation work and her art, and she likes to use her scientific background to help um, educate people about Alaska fish species through her business, uh, Shell Art Studio, and the artwork that she creates. Um, Shelly primarily uses acrylic uh, paintings and scientific illustrations in watercolor uh, or in pencil uh, to capture fishing adventures and educational posters to help inspire people uh, to protect and conserve uh, Alaska's amazing fisheries. Um, Shelly has some great work. And um, if you guys have seen anything that we've shared on our social media lately, um, you'll see that we shared some of our partners uh, at Alaska Rodco, some of their new conservation line that they are coming out with. And that artwork uh, was commissioned through Shelly. Um, and um, our friend Matt over there has been um, using that for his conservation line and his logo. So like I said, Shelly does great work and we're super excited to have her on the podcast. So welcome on, Shelly. Hi, thanks for having me. For sure. So let's kind of just kick this off. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. um, Well, that was a good introduction for background. And um, I'm living in Juneau, Alaska now. We've lived in Alaska for about four years now, coming up on five. Um, My husband's in the Army, so we, we bounced around a little bit. But we landed in Juneau, and we're here for a while. Um, and I really just fell in love with everything about Juno here, the people, the wildlife and the fisheries, especially. So that's kind of where we're at now. And, um, I'm lucky enough to have the support from the community to be able to be a full-time artist. Now that's a recent transition that I've done in the past year. Um, and I'm also now a mom, so I'm learning new new things on juggling, being mom, and full-time uh, self-business owner. So do you still then, are you still working as a marine biologist too, or is that something that um, you kind of been in the past now? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not presently doing anything that you would probably consider marine biology specifically. Uh, that's most probably most of my past not saying I won't ever do it again in the future but not in the near future at least I think um I think primarily I've found my niche in doing art and illustration that supports biologists in marine biology but I not I'm not primarily doing any sort of research um or restoration efforts gotcha and is that something that you, your artwork, is that something that you got into uh, once you moved up in, up to Alaska, or is that something you were doing before and then just kind of used Alaska as <laughs> some of your inspiration? Yeah, it's, I would say it got, uh, it definitely became much more serious in Alaska, but I definitely have done art my whole life. And um, I grew up in Florida and that's where I went to school. Um, and so I, I started painting the fish there for fun primarily. And then the last couple of years that I lived in Florida, I did start selling some of my fish art to the anglers there. I did a lot of like red snapper and tarpon and dolphin fish, uh, mahi mahi. Um, and so I was really starting to get in a groove and then that's when the army moved us and, <laughs> So right, right about when I started getting serious with my painting in Florida, we moved. And so I had a whole new set of, of fish and wildlife to um, discover and paint. That's awesome. Gotcha. So <clears throat> did you, before you started getting into art, did you enjoy like doing outdoor things like fishing and, and stuff or did that come after the art you just wanted to get into the outdoors more or did that fall into place it kind of came hand in hand um 
but I would say outdoor probably first. Um, my mom was a marine biologist and taught me sciences um, from home. I was homeschooled. And so we would we would go to the beach a lot as part of our curriculum. She dragged the microscopes out there and we would plug in the microscopes and look at what we found in the water and the ocean. And then um, we'd go like snorkeling and stuff. And she would have me record in my scientific journal what we saw and we'd have to go home and ID the fish species that we found and that sort of thing. So uh, we definitely we definitely were inspired by the outdoors, but I think that encouragement to make a field journal kind of inspired this beginnings of scientific illustration in, in me. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> And is that what ultimately also led you to go into biology? Was that? Oh yeah, for sure. (laughs) I was hooked. I was hooked for sure. And then um, there's also this place called the Gulfarium in um, Gulf Breeze, Florida, wherever where I lived, and they did this program that I was lucky lucky enough to be a part of in high school, where you were taking marine biology classes there and getting to experience um, the wildlife they had there. Uh, it, it was like a lot of rescue animals. They would do take in like turtles and dolphins from being stranded from hurricanes and such. And so after that, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to marine biology. <laughs> nice. um, I ended up, even though I got to play with a lot of people's favorites, dolphins and turtles, um, I ended up just being really passionate about fish and I wanted to go into fish biology and uh, support fish habitat restoration. Um, Did your biology, was it mostly like saltwater based or did you do any freshwater stuff? Yeah, primarily, primarily saltwater. We, I learned a little bit about, definitely learned a little bit about wetlands and, um, wetland restoration but as far as like freshwater fish I never did anything along those lines after I graduated in Florida I worked um, as a habitat restoration manager um, from the BP oil spill I don't know if you guys remember that in 2010 Mm -hmm. we Florida received a lot of grant money to um, recover habitats and so I was one of the managers for one part, one little part of Florida uh, to do some of those restoration projects. And we did some restoration in the wetlands, um, but primarily like the bays and, and the salt waters, the areas that I worked. Nice. Yeah. And when you came up to Alaska, were you able to continue uh, working in the biology field or was that something that, that you kind of took a back burner when you started doing your art up here? Yeah, it was, um, I definitely got to do some, some my marine biology here in Alaska, which was great. And I'm super thankful that I got to do that. Uh, the, the job market was really competitive when I moved up here and I had limited, limited experience in Alaska and that was kind of not, um, very competitive, even though I had all this experience in Florida, it didn't transfer well, um, for the timing. Uh, but I did get to work at uh, the, a couple hatcheries here in Alaska. I worked at um, the Alaska Fishing Game Sportfish Hatchery in Anchorage. And then I uh, also worked in the Dipak uh, Macaulay Salmon Hatchery here in Juneau. So I did that for uh, like three of the years that we lived here. <laughs> Just recently stopping that. Um, the fish hatcheries here are really cool. I don't know you, one of you lives in Alaska, right? <laughs> yep, I do. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. It, but, uh, I don't know if you've been to any of the, the fish hatcheries here or if what your perspective is on them. I know there's a lot of debate, but at least the ones that I've worked at are really cool because they, um, they work so hard to raise and rear fish in in a healthy way that doesn't pollute the environment around them, unlike fish farms, which are very different. Um, And so being able to experience that in rearing salmon 
uh, was really cool and learned a lot about their biology. And then of course we release them when they're still little. So they're not, we're not rearing them all the way to adulthood. Yeah. Gotcha. And so when did your um, art kind of take over from that? So uh, I, we moved here and we moved to Anchorage first and that's when I worked at the um, sport fish hatchery in Anchorage. Um, I worked there as I was doing tours and also helping redesign their visitor center. Um, and one of the reasons I was hired was because I had helped do art for some education in Florida. And they were like, oh, this could be really useful for their visitor center. So I ended up doing um, a lot of art for the visitor center there. If you ever go there, you can see some of my fish that I've drawn for them. Um, or if you see any emails or advertisements from Fish and Game, there's some of my artwork, artwork as part of those usually. Uh, so it was really cool. Uh, it ended up fitting really well for me in a place where I can work, help rear fish, but also draw. <laughs> it was a perfect combo for me. And cool. so I uh, started illustrating salmonids there for them. Um, and then one day I was just kind of like, I want a poster that shows all the salmon in their different um, color iterations. I'd seen some that showed like silver or their ocean phase and then their spawning phase, but I never saw one that had both the spawning phase for the male and the female all on one poster with the ocean phase. So I ended up there might be one out there, but I didn't know of one. <laughs> so I decided I wanted to make one on my own. Um, and that kind of happened around the same time my position ended because it was seasonal. Uh, and so I was heading into winter with no job. And so I ended up creating this poster with all the different types of salmon on it. And that just uh, really blew up. It, I got so many orders for it right off the bat nice. um, just between like uh, friends sharing it to other friends and Instagram. I started advertising on Instagram and that just was kind of like the basis of my entire art career in Alaska was this salmon species poster that I decided I wanted for myself and then decided to share it with other people. Yeah. <clears throat> so from the transition of like, you were talking about you were painting like tropical fish and kind of down in Florida. Is it, is it from an art perspective hard to switch over and start drawing like cold water species and like finding the details and stuff in a whole different like region or how, how does that all work out for you? Um, it definitely was a bit of a challenge because I wasn't familiar with what these fish looked like here. Um, like I just wasn't, I wasn't sure what species we had here at first. I learned that pretty quickly. And then also I'm just just not being familiar with that, you had to find good reference photos, which can be a bit of a challenge. Um, in Florida, I'd seen these fish in person and I was, you know, had firsthand experience with these. I had my own reference photos. So it was just easier to start illustrating them because I was already familiar with what they looked like. Yeah. And so I would say the biggest hurdle it's not that the fish were actually harder to draw. It was just that I didn't have experience with what they looked like. And so it was a combination of <clears throat> trying to find good reference photos and also getting my own experience so that I can see what they look like right when they come out of the water. Cause you know, even when you take a picture um, the color starts deteriorating as soon as they come out of the water. So you want that real experience so that you can see. Yeah. 
almost like you're taking a picture with your mind of like what you just caught yeah that you remember like the details and the colors and everything exactly yeah uh, crazy so how does your uh personal fishing then work into that were you able to go out and catch these fish yourself so you could have that firsthand experience with those fish like was that like a goal to go catch um, a big, big majority of what you're trying to illustrate oh definitely that was such a big goal of mine and <laughs> coming from florida uh and having um i'm definitely not like the most experienced fisherman at all and coming from florida like you don't fish with tides or anything like that um just with saltwater fishing you just go and fish like mm -hmm there's always fish out there. And so learning about how they run with the tides and like how they're so specific on what kind of baits that they want or what kind of lures, or what kind of flies, depending on what kind of fishing you're doing. Um, it was very overwhelming for me at first, but I was lucky enough for my boss to be like the coolest Alaska outdoor woman ever. And <laughs> she like, took me fishing and taught me how to do like everything um as a part sometimes as a part of my position and sometimes just, just hanging out um because we were also educating people how to fish so she needed me to know how to fish so I could help other people yeah <laughs> um so but yes that instantly became a goal of mine was just like I want to catch these fish and I want to see them and I want to know how to do it so I can illustrate them better and also just know how to do it. Um, and I just, I just fell in love with it. It was so much fun. And just like the challenge of it was so inspiring to me. And I really <clears throat> never looked back ever since. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you mainly stick to like, uh like trout and salmon or do you try to go to that like oddball things like you ever try to draw like sculpins or like other things that are in the river um for drawing them definitely yeah i i will draw i i would love to just draw all the fish that have ever touched the water at some point yeah. <laughs> it's a big undertaking um there's like a book that I have called the Alaska, I think it's just called like Alaska fish species, but it's like this thick and there's like 200 different types of sculpin out there. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it's <Good> wild. <laughs> yeah. We'll it's, but I have drawn a sculpin. Um, I decided to make a saltwater species poster this past year. And so, um, because there's so many different families of saltwater species, I couldn't draw all of them like I could with the salmon. Um, so I ended up picking a representative for each family group and having that be like the representative on the poster. Yeah, gotcha. So I have drawn one sculpin. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so what is it? Share the love with everything. <laughs> exactly. So what did that evolution look like from starting your business and then going full-time in that? And then what did that look like going through? And then to the point now where you're like, you're, you have more ideas to do things like your, your uh, saltwater species. Um, what is that? What did that whole process and the whole evolution look like? Oh man, I just have, I have more ideas than I have time, but <laughs> it basically started out with that poster. Like I said, it's been, we moved to Juneau shortly after that. I got a job at the fish hatchery here. And um, as soon as that salt or that salmon poster took off so well, I was like, I got to do another one. And the most common other set of species is freshwater, which I'm less familiar with. But um, I was like, I need to do a freshwater poster to go with the salmon. So I did that, uh, which included like pike and she fish and trout and cutthroat and I don't know, all those, all those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and that one did really well too. Um, and then um, 
after I did the freshwater poster, I started getting commissions for people asking to paint their fish. And I was like, well, yeah, that sounds super cool. Mm -hmm. And so I started painting um, a specific fish for people, like if they wanted a sockeye or if they wanted a rainbow trout. Um, so I started doing that and I used to, I used to do a lot of pieces on reclaimed wood, which was super fun. Um, I haven't done that recently, but they would, they would come out really well. Um, or I would do it on canvas, depending on if like the client wanted a background or not. So I would get a couple of those every year. Um, and my husband was also a really big help in this. And he was like, you need to do stickers and you need to do um, other products so that people like mugs and t-shirts so that people can buy this more than just a poster. And so he was a big, he, he's like the business guy. And so <laughs> he helped me make a website. He helped me buy supplies that I needed to awesome. create this inventory. And he did like all the background work that I had no idea what to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would say it kind of went like that and little spurts for two years where I would have a new product launch and we'd be really busy and then it would die down for a little while and then over and over again um, <clears throat> until this past year, I just started getting way too many commission requests that I couldn't keep up with it and do a full-time job. Um, <clears throat> so we made that, that decision this past year to transition from working full-time and then coming home and painting full-time <laughs> to just <laughs> painting at home and it's I'm just so thankful that I have the opportunity to do that and get to do what I really love that's awesome super cool um sorry I know you're gonna ask a question Keaton real quick um <laughs> is everything that you um sell on your store is that do you do all that yourself you and your husband or do you have to um, I have stickers made somewhere else. Or are you guys able to do a lot of that there? I used to make all of my own stickers and um, that became too time consuming when I started getting requests for from shops, like shops started, local shops started wanting to carry my stickers mm -hmm. and I just couldn't keep up with those orders. So I started ordering those. Um, which was way easier but I just didn't have the budget to order them at first um, and then my mugs have always been outsourced um, and t-shirts have always been outsourced but I always I always do my own prints myself here at home gotcha that's super cool yeah all right go for it Keaton I, f I totally forgot what I was gonna say <laughs> I was like I was zoned in and I had it and then it's gone it's <laughs> You gotta you can't pause me like that, Kyle. I gotta get it out. I'm <laughs> sorry, man. It won't happen again. I promise. No, it's okay. That's part of the podcast. So, yeah. So what what challenges did you face? Like, what's some challenges you face um, starting a business, um, like an art business in today's kind of? There's so much stuff thrown at you through like social media and different platforms. What's some challenges that you, you face to put yours like in the front? Well, I guess this isn't really in regards to social media, but right whenever I had these couple of posters that I made, I was chatting with the, um, a couple of stores locally and also die packs has a visitor center and they were gonna buy a lot of my posters to put in their visitor center shop and some of the um, local art shops were gonna buy some and then COVID happened <laughs> so I was looking at 
getting all of these sales for these gift shops right off the bat in the beginning. And then when COVID happened, they were like, I'm so sorry, I can't buy anything. Like, we're not gonna have any visitors this year. So in that regard, social media actually helped because I had all these posters and the only reason I sold them was because of social media. Yeah. Um, so I, I, Instagram is pretty much how I built my whole business. And then, well, Instagram and community talking. Um, so that was tough. Um, I think the first year, like I didn't really make any money for the first year because everything was just reinvested into the business. Um, you'd make a little money and then you just buy more product with that money that you made. <laughs> so that was, that was tough for a little while because it'd be like, you're working so hard, but then you're not seeing any profit. Yeah. Um, and then you're coming home after work to work and everyone else is going fishing or hiking and <laughs> doing cool stuff. And you're like, ah, I just need to paint. <laughs> no, I, I can definitely relate to that. Cause the same thing guiding, right? Like you work all day and then you come home, you don't want to fish and other people are fishing and then you've got more work to do. But I especially relate like what you're saying in that first year, like when you're first getting started and how much you have to put forth and then the return that first year or two isn't um, as much as you're maybe you're hoping, or maybe it's just, it's, it's just, there's no way it can be as much as you're putting into it. But if you stick with it, kind of like what you're seeing now, um, mm -hmm. it definitely starts to pay off the longer that you stay invested in it. Yeah, definitely. And year, year two was like the, gear buying year so mm -hmm. like I bought a better iPad so that I could draw on and better printer so I could do my own prints and that sort of thing uh, so I bought a lot of machinery in year two where I could actually support myself better in year three um, so year two wasn't very profitable either but now it's like making those investments were so worth it it's because now I'm sitting in a place where I can, I still don't have a lot of time, but <laughs> at least I'm not um, just reinvesting all of my money back straight into my business. Yeah. Still a lot of it, but no. <laughs> would, would you feel like since now you're going full-time in your business that you've become more passionate about art and like, are you, um, yeah, l let's just do that. Are, are you more <laughs> about art right now or uh, have you felt like you were always passionate and just kind of you just feel like you're on the same train yeah I don't know about um maybe you guys never heard this because you didn't draw but I always heard growing up like don't become an artist because you'll never make any money um and so I always treated it like a hobby for sure um, but I always enjoyed it and then I would say definitely as the more I get to do it the more I love it it's it's not getting old <laughs> and it, I don't foresee it getting old anytime soon yeah um I love being in a in a space right now in the community where people bring me their ideas and they're like hey are you interested in like collaborating with this or are you interested in painting this and I just think it's so much fun to work with clients and give them what they want. That's awesome. So what is your, um, I guess, involvement with the community? Like how does community interact with you and with your artwork? Um, well, there's multiple different ways. There's the, just like gift shop, way where that's pretty standard um and that's that's awesome because people will message me and they'll be like hey I found your stickers in this gift shop it was so cool <laughs> um and then there's the uh working with the clients to like just my friends or my friends of friends will be like hey look who did this for me and then someone else will be like hey I want something like that um 
for instance, one of you guys goes out and you catch the uh, fish of a lifetime. One, I don't know, what's your favorite fish? Or I love trout. Freaky. I love trout. What? I love like trout or like uh, kokanee or anything like okay. that. Okay, so you catch this kokanee. It's the biggest kokanee you've ever caught in your whole life, and you took a picture and you go home and you're like, oh my gosh, there was a water drop in the camera. And now I don't have a picture of this most amazing moment of my life and I wanna remember it forever. And so that is what sometimes, it's not just cause they had a ruined picture, but. <laughs> <laughs> it all came reason. to the surface. <laughs> it's one reason they're like, hey, I want to remember this moment forever. And so they'll be like, can you paint this co kokanee in this lake that I caught it in? And they'll send me a picture of the lake or whatever. And um, so then I'll paint that for them. And then they have this, this memory that they either didn't capture well, or it just didn't capture it in full but that they wanted. And now it's hanging up in their living room. It's kind of like a, a different type of taxidermy, but <laughs> yeah. you get like a landscape with it or, um, it can be the exact same size as the fish that you caught in your life, all those sorts of options um, to just have this memory living on your wall for the rest of your life. That's crazy. Um, yeah, so that's what I love doing with the acrylic paints is just like capturing those moments that you got to experience firsthand. Yeah, how, like if a raindrop or something blocks like half the fish like how do you represent like the rest of the fish you kind of <laughs> just like, reference photos for you just uh, kind of yeah yeah and it, obviously i'll talk to them i was like was there anything specific about the fish that you want in there included if they don't have a good picture of the actual fish um otherwise i would just find like a good reference photo for it and a lot of fish are pretty similar <clears throat> in yeah. the way that they look. So that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so do you feel like your artwork has um, pushed a positive impact on the fishery uh, communities around you? Like, do you feel like, you know, like you're making the conservation shirts and stuff like that? Do you, do you feel like uh, that's benefiting you in ways? It's definitely benefiting me for sure. I hope it's benefiting the community as well. Um, ideally, I created this business to make money, but the that wasn't like the only goal. I wanted to also educate people and um, use it for conservation. Being a marine biologist in the past, I know how important it is to conserve our um lands here and so I wanted to be able to use the art for that in some way so yes sometimes people like Matt will reach out and be like hey I'm doing this conservation in line and he um didn't ask for it to be donated or anything um but I was like hey since this you're gonna be putting all these profits for these t-shirts into King Kong Conservation. I don't want to charge you for this artwork. Um, but then I was like, if you just send me a shirt, that's good <laughs> enough. We'll, we can call it a deal. <laughs> so I don't know if that counts as being paid. I guess it kind of does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, hopefully at least got them a discount. Um, so if people approach me like that, where they're doing something that is going to conserve uh, or protect or put efforts towards that, I, I try to donate time and effort for that yeah. so that I can use this business to bring positive impact to our community as well. Um, yeah, I think there was something else I was gonna say too. I think I lost it. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> no I, I just think like there's there's so many ways to make impacts on like the fisheries around you, right? You can do hands-on work, but there's also like all these other things above the hands-on work that can benefit 
fisheries in many ways. So it's uh, it's really good work that you're doing. Oh, that was the, um, the other thing I was going to mention was education. Um, a lot, I cannot believe how many people who live in Alaska who don't really know anything about fish. I don't know how you live in Alaska and not know anything <laughs> about fish. Um, <laughs> but there are people out there who don't. And so another fun thing that I feel like my art contributes to is the education of the types of fish species that we have here. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's some people out there who are like, ooh, fish gross. Uh, and so <laughs> ideally, like I try to make them look pretty <laughs> yeah. and make them look well like I like I see them um and so I I want to draw the eye of people who not just love fish but also the people who don't really care about fish um so that they kind of get inspired to know about fish and obviously other types of wildlife so that they can have a relationship with those species and understand why it's important to protect them and conserve them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if somebody doesn't know of something, right, if they're not aware, if they don't know, say the life cycle of a salmon or they don't, don't even know the different types of salmon or how many types there are, they're not going to really care about that thing until they can see it. And then that's kind of like facilitating them wanting to learn more. And mm -hmm. that's, what's important. Just like just getting people, let's say into the outdoors or teaching about the outdoors. That's what makes them care about trying to preserve it and trying to keep these beautiful creatures around and, and do what we can to protect them. Exactly. There's no, no one better than the fishermen and hunters. I feel like at least mo in majority, who want to protect that more. Absolutely. You got to preserve your resources and, you know, not everyone's going to get the chance to come out and go fishing and, or ex exploring or hiking or, I mean, so just like giving them a reason to care, maybe from a thousand miles away is <laughs> big, right? Yeah. And that's a, that's a hard thing to do, but in art, you can do that compared to like me just, hopping on social media and be like here protect this you know you can be like yeah. what's in here this is what's beautiful i'm expressing mm -hmm. it through different ways and routes and stuff like that yeah so i do have a few um stickers that are like 100 percent profit goes to uh trout unlimited for uh, restoration and preservation of the Tongass, uh, which is the national forest that I live in and around. Oh, cool. um, oh, nice. And then we just started the t-shirt line with um, Alaska Rod Company to protect king salmon, ideally. Uh, and so I'm super excited that I have that now. I've been dying to get another specific, like, conservation line going through my art and so any opportunities like that I'm just hoping for more because I love it <laughs> that's awesome so when you were not uh, working on your art or you're not at home being a mom what else are you doing are you able to get out and do some personal fishing for yourself do any hiking what does that look like so i just started this full time at the end of last summer mm -hmm. and i did get to enjoy some really nice times for myself um i don't know if you know anything about juno but we're actually a rainforest and so it rains here all the time <laughs> and when we get a sunny day it's like the whole world stops in Juneau and everyone just goes outside and does stuff and so being on my own schedule was super nice because I could work all week and the weather was crap and then 
I look at the forecast. I'm like, oh, Monday is going to be kind of nice. I'm going to take off on Monday. <laughs> and so then get to go out and enjoy the sunshine and then come back work on the rainy days. Um, <clears throat> I am a little more busy this summer, so we'll see how it goes, but I am planning on it. Um, the winter has been really fun and I've been, a, I've been learning on ways of how to go outdoors with a baby and um, yeah. do that safely. And it's really fun. There's a lot of people who just like have their kid in a backpack and they go out fishing. So I'm looking forward to that here very soon. We've done a lot of hiking together. So he's used to the backpack. Um, we take our dogs out on hikes all the time. So it's going to be fun, I think. That's awesome. How was how was the uh, how was the transition from coming from like Florida to Alaska? Like, was there a lot of those are big learning curve for you? Was it like, man, I'm in this beautiful weather and boom, now it's snowing at negative twenty. <laughs> I owned zero zero coats, zero boots, <laughs> zero any sort of thermal layers zero wool socks and um yes there was a big curve. yeah uh it was fun though I enjoyed the challenge but um my husband liked to make fun of me a lot because we actually drove up here from Florida uh so we drove through the Rockies and through the Yukon um and on the Alcan, and it was just one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Um, but he was laughing at me the whole way because I'd be like, oh, look at that rock. <laughs> oh, look at that rock. Because <laughs> I just never really seen rocks before. We have sand in Florida. Um, and then there'd be like a little bit of snow on the ground, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, there's snow. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. And he's like, there's no snow on the ground. <laughs> um, so yeah, there, there was definitely a learning curve, um, but I think, I feel like I adjusted pretty good after one winter, you know, once you, once you live in negative 20 for a little bit, it's like 30 degrees is bumblebee, so yeah. it's nice and warm. <laughs> for sure. I mean, today in Anchorage, it's 69. It's like, holy cow, this is like yeah. super hot. <laughs> You're like t-shirt and shorts weather right there. Exactly. <laughs> moving like when moving up to alaska did you find yourself being more dependent off like alaska's resources like outside like fishing and and stuff like that yeah um in anchorage probably not as much i'd say it's a little more city like mm -hmm. um and then when we moved when we moved to juno it's like there's obviously grocery stores and stuff but um there's so much more of a influence from the community to have your own resources and um, support yourself that way. And it, it's obviously not a requirement to live here, but it's so, uh, it's so much easier and so inspiring to do it. Um, so it's like, everyone is so helpful and encouraging if you're trying to learn how to fish. Um, and then my husband is learning how to hunt this year. And so yeah. that's really cool. We're excited to get into that. Um, and yeah, there's everyone like, you know, your friends will be texting you like, you want to go berry picking with me? And so I like, go <laughs> spend a day ber picking berries and then making jams and, um, all so, sorts of fun stuff it's i think the spruce tips are out right now so i was debating on whether or not to go get some spruce tips <laughs> it's awesome yeah it's but like, lots of gathering and lots of fishing that's sure. really cool um i'm kind of hopping around here with some questions for you but what was your uh who was like your inspiration to get into art like wh what was your inspiration getting into art um, I, I feel like there was different types of inspiration, but, um, 
I it never strayed from the outdoors. Yeah. Just like I I would see stuff and I told you I'm a, I'm just a picture person and I would go home and be like I want to capture that forever. And so when I would see a fish that I liked or a scenery that I thought was really pretty, I'd want to capture that forever. Um and maybe it's because I'm not the best photographer, but I would take pictures and I'd be like, yeah, I like this picture, but it didn't capture the whole like feeling of the experience that I had. So I wanted to, whether that's changing the position of the fish or adding the color that I saw, but then I didn't capture in the photo kind of thing. Um, so that's how it started. And then just like the more I would see with fishing or boating or hiking, the more I would want to capture those experiences. Yeah. Were you, did you, uh, were you self-taught or did you have anyone teach you? Uh, yeah, I was self-taught. Wow. That's crazy. That's really cool. That's, it's always impressive hearing someone like teach themselves a skill, you know, I'm like the guy that needs the torch in front of me and the guy leading me to the right area, you know. <laughs> people are like, oh, I did it by myself. And it's like, man, you climbed that mountain by yourself? I mean, props to you. Well, thanks. I definitely had, obviously, help along the way, but no yeah. official classes yeah. or anything like that. It's like I, I YouTube a lot of stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, I could do this. I can change bearings in my trailer. I got YouTube. <laughs> I, don't that that huh? I don't know about that. I'm still struggling. Hey, I, you're getting it figured out. You, the only reason I brought that one up is because Kyle's facing his his camper bearings right now. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I could do that for you through youtube even. <laughs> you, you got it just give it, it you know a half an hour video turns into like a six hour project just fair warning yeah. I, like, I, I try to find like the five minute videos so because i'm like okay five minutes relates to maybe like an hour and a half <laughs> i agree yeah, that's okay. true well, awesome um are there um, is there anything that we haven't asked you, Shelly, that um, you wanted to mention about you or about your artwork, your time in Alaska? Is there anything else you wanted to, to add? Um, I'm trying to think. I would just say it's, it's pretty much just like a dream come true, getting to illustrate some for Fish and Game. Um, I've always loved doing paintings and, and beautiful sceneries, but contributing to the scientific community is also really just like a dream come true for me. Um, so I'm so stoked to be able to be a part of that. And then also be a part of producing artworks for conservation efforts. We touched on that a lot. So I, I got one more. Where can someone like, physically go see a piece of your artwork do you have places that you have like a canvas up on a wall or anything of that sort I do um uh I have a little a few scientific illustration g clays in um Stefan's fine arts in Anchorage gallery uh I have um here in Juno I have a little shop <clears throat> with the 907 uh, Handyman, which is kind of an awkward uh, collaboration, but we're good friends <laughs> who owns the 907 Handyman. They're in, um, they have a little art shop in the front of their store here in Juneau. And then also the Huddle and um, Arctic Chiropractic. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. And then as far as like big, big artwork pieces go they're mostly in homes um i have home, i have some in anchorage some in fairbanks some in juno is where most of my large pieces are and then smaller pieces have gone um all over the u.s and 
a couple overseas. Oh, super cool. That's crazy. Your art's out there. It's like everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's wild. It feels so great. The, the first time I sent something, um, a large artwork over to Finland, it was just like, whoa, someone over there wanted to buy a piece of my art. That's super cool. So if somebody does want to, if they're not, if they can't go and get it in person, what's the, the best way to um, get in contact with you, whether that be for commission or that be f- uh, for some of the artwork they already have out? Um, yeah, I would definitely start on Instagram if you have it at Shell Art Studio. Um, but you can also email me at Shelly at Shell Art Studio or go to my website, shellartstudio.com. Awesome. It's all pretty, pretty consistent and easy. Yeah. Cool. Hopefully we can get, get you some people looking at your art and through here, you know? Yeah, that would be cool. Um, I'm excited for the summer. I have some commissions coming up that are going to be really fun. And I am hoping to get out fishing so i can get some more inspiration (laughs) it's a double win yeah that's great um are you going to be at any um like pop-ups like are you at any like fairs or like art festivals or anything around the state that people might be able to find you at this summer um i have two uh known ones this summer in juno called the fresh air markets they're the third saturday of the month here in downtown Juno, I'll be there in June and July. Um, I don't have any others scheduled at the moment, but hopefully some more. I usually try and do a first Friday here and there, which is here in Juno. We do a lot of the businesses um, will host an artist for the first Friday of the month, which is a really cool thing they do here. That's yeah. awesome. That is so cool. Yeah. Those are super fun because I just I talk to the community the whole night and it's they're so supportive here in Juno. Is it is Juno a pretty big town like in in Alaska? Would you say? I would say it's a big Alaska town. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Not, I'm not saying it's like Seattle <laughs> or anything, but it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a lot smaller than Anchorage, but. It's definitely bigger than, um, like, no more Bethel. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's smaller than Fairbanks, too. I haven't been to Fairbanks, though. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, cool, Shelly. We, uh, we appreciated the time that we've had with you today. And, and I just wanted to say personally that um, I've actually seen your artwork in the past when you did um, your Christmas uh, launch um, uh, oh, okay. last year. Um, I was on your website and I was like, oh, I saw this one of your ornaments and I went to go buy it. It was already sold out. <laughs> and ever since then, I've kind of been following along, um, checking out your artwork. And it's, if people listening haven't checked it out, it's really good stuff. It's really cool, uh, very informative. Um, yeah, if you haven't gone to our website at shellartstudio.com, uh, you guys gotta go check it out because there's some some really really cool stuff, um, and I think it's, it'd be great um, anywhere. So awesome! Well, thank you. Yeah, it can go fast. <laughs> when we uh, when I put that we we're having you on, the we had like a couple people reach out to me and they're like, "Oh man, I've been following her. I love her stuff. <laughs> but I'm so excited for this podcast." So oh my it, gosh. Like, such a different you're already a little celebrity in like the that the fishing and outdoor community so it's uh it's really cool to see in here and uh and we're so glad we got to have you on and doing some great stuff but before you can go we have some of our favorite questions yet and it okay. is rapid fire round we end every podcast with the rapid fire round so you gotta bear with us here for a second Kyle, you want to kick it off? Yep, yep. All right. So what is your favorite place in Alaska to visit? Oh, um, I went down to Sweetheart Creek 
which is about a 45 minute boat ride down south of uh, Juno here. And so far that's been my favorite place. It was so cool to fish right next to the bears. And it was one of the coolest experiences I've ever done. Um, there are a lot of places in Alaska I have not been, and I'm sure I'd love to go to all of them. So. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Heck yeah. What's your, what's your favorite fish to fish for? My favorite fish to fish for, uh, I still have a lot to try, <laughs> but so far nothing has topped the fight I've had with the coho here. Just like, they're so much fun because they bite so often and they fight so hard and it just, you can't beat it. Oh, for sure. Totally agree. What is your favorite fish to paint? Oh, <laughs> um, do you guys, I'm sure you, you know, grayling, right? Oh, that's awesome. I think they're the most fun because they're so colorful and they're so like intricate. Absolutely. I like it. And it's like, it's like a very uniquely, like, I mean, you can catch grayling in other places, but I feel like it's very uniquely Alaskan, just kind of like salmon. Mm -hmm. It's very uniquely for Alaska. Yeah, definitely a bucket list item is to go to Fairbanks and fish for grayling in Fairbanks. That's awesome. What is, uh, did we do this one, Kyle? Sorry. This one? Uh, not yet. No, go for it. Okay. All right. What is your dream destination? Like, where do you want to go fish? I mean, you kind of got the tropical, <laughs> now you're up in the, like up in Alaska. So you, you got the best of both worlds. Not a lot of people get that, but like, what's your, where's your go-to? Where do you want to go see? What do you want to fish? Where do you want to be? I feel like I cheated and answered a little bit on the last one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um fishing grayling and fairbanks is up there for sure um oh gosh all of it yeah <laughs> i i have to not had fun with any kind of fishing so i'll, I'll just stick with the grayling for now <laughs> is there is there anywhere like foreign you'd like to go like in a different country um I hadn't really thought about that much, but um, it would be super cool to go fishing in Australia. Oh yeah. Super sick. They got some weird stuff they could. I know. I just want to see the fish there because there's so many unique types of fish. They're bright and colorful. That's amazing. Yeah. You got to go catch some of them, make some paintings. <laughs> yeah. Break out the pastels. <laughs> I would say that's like every breed biologist dream is to go check out the Great Barrier Reef, though. So, <laughs> that's so cool. Thank you. What is your favorite snack and drink for when you are going for a day outdoors, whether you're hiking or you're fishing? What do you, what do you bring along to snack on and drink? Um, it's usually not very interesting <laughs> oh you know what when I do mountain hikes though we get breezing donuts every time before we go um it's like a little 24-hour store here but they sell amazing donuts and we get those donuts before we go on our hike and then when you're sitting on top of the mountain exhausted but you did it you eat your donuts and it's the most amazing donut you've ever had. <laughs> um, awesome. What's your favorite part about the donut? Like, it, you know, I'm a donut <laughs> connoisseur. So is it like fluffy um, or is it like, now I'm curious. Uh, they are fluffy. They're just huge too. They're like the size of my face. They're ginormous. Oh, that is awesome. Um, and they're just, yeah, they're really fluffy and, um, I don't know. They're just good donuts. Yeah. I'm going to have to, now I'm going to have to go get on a plane and go to Alaska. And yeah. Try. Come <laughs> to know. We'll, we'll go fishing and then we'll get donuts <laughs> afterwards. That sounds like a plan. Great. That's awesome. What, what kind of music are you listening to when you're like driving to go fishing? Um, I really like, have you guys heard of the national parks? Mm -mm. 
Okay. Um, well, the national parks are a really fun band. Um, and then uh, related music, like the Head and the Heart and some other, I don't even know, I guess it's like alternative sort of cool. music. Gotcha. <laughs> so you head out the door to go on a mountain hike or you're going, you're going to go fishing besides getting a donut. What is, what is something that you can't go and, and do that trip with that? Like what's something you grab that maybe uh, most folks might not think about grabbing, putting in their pack or in their waders or whatever. Hmm. Um, I always have a multi-tool with me wherever I go. Um, my dogs have been quilled before. And so I always want to make sure I have something I can pull those out with, uh, or for fishing. Obviously it's good to have that for cutting lines and stuff. Um, so I always have that when I'm on, on my person, when I'm hiking or fishing. Um, I don't know, was that what you were talking about or did you want something about food again? <laughs> uh, no, no, that was perfect. That was perfect. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I, I think having a multi tool and then obviously like matches or lighter is so important when you're in Alaska, especially. Yeah. Just, I mean, even like, I feel like a lot of people underestimate that in their day packs too. Like, a lot of stuff yeah. can happen in your day stuff, you know, like having that, just some of that extra stuff. Like, you're, I have friends that'll laugh at me for carrying some extra stuff with me when we're just going on a day hike. But I'm like, mm -hmm. you just never know, like, what's going to happen. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yep, always, always have multi-tool, always have the flashlight and the lighter and usually an extra pair of socks as well. Right. Cool. So, uh, yeah. oh, go ahead, Kyle. No, 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 you're good. No, go ahead, because I'm going to. No, no. Okay. Okay. Cool. You're good. You're good. I know where you're going. You're good. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to pause. I'm just pausing right here. We're going to do a, uh, ask you one more question and then we're going to do an outro. So uh, okay. bear with us here and, uh, and we'll keep on rolling. So I just want to let you know and continue. Okay. What is, uh, as we're coming, you know, we're wrapping up this podcast. What's your favorite outdoor story? oh boy it can be a good it can be a bad it can be learning uh just your favorite like outdoor story maybe it was your first fish you caught or anything <laughs> this about is a good story this is the first sample that i ever caught um uh if you guys have ever been have you ever been fishing in in ship creek in anchorage oh, i have not i've heard a lot about okay. it I have. so it's nickname, you might guess. Um, <laughs> and uh, because it's not great conditions usually for, it's just like muddy and gross and there's tons of people. Uh, it's very competitive fishing. And uh, I tried fishing there so many times when I was first learning and um, I would fish there for like hours. I got there like two hours before the tide and was like going 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 and then this guide walks up with their people which is totally fine um and he's like okay drop your line right here which is shoulder to shoulder next to me which is fine because there's tons of people there um that's just how it goes there and he his uh what do you call a client i guess his client was fishing there for five minutes and catches a king salmon and i'm just like you're kidding me right <laughs> oh, <that's home. laughs> which like happy for his client but i was like i've been fishing here for two hours <laughs> yeah um, anyways so i was super sad because i did that a couple times and didn't catch anything uh and so i finally go to a to this different creek called um campbell creek to catch uh coho and i finally have hooked a coho for my very first salmon I'm bringing in and my friend was with me who had um her labs and I get the fish on the shore and I'm so excited we're celebrating and her lab just comes running in and grabs the fish and 
D hooks the fish and the fish plops right back in the river and swims oh, away. No. Oh man. Oh. oh my gosh. I am so oh. sorry. That's a good story. It was like after all these hours uh, of work and catching my first salmon, we were just so excited. And then that happened. <laughs> it was it was comical. It was so funny. And just oh. like she was so mad at her dog and she like gave me her fish. She was like, here, you have mine. <laughs> <That's so laughs> we were just we, we laugh about it all the time now. And um, ever since then, it was like something clicked that day and it was a little bit easier after that to catch yeah. fish, but, uh, it was a good story. Um, okay. probably my favorite fishing trip I've ever done is going out for halibut on the boat, just a gorgeous day, catching halibut, watching, um, humpback whales feeding in the background was just an amazing experience. So mm. good ones and bad ones. They all make good stories. Absolutely. <laughs> experience. <laughs> Yep. well anything else we wanted to add or we think we're good i think i'm good all right good all right i'm gonna do the outro here <clears throat> well that was another episode of the young guides podcast and we just want to really thank shelly for hopping on and talking with us um make sure to go you know show some 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 support for her um, you can check out our Instagram, which is, can you tell us your Instagram again, Shelly? At Shell Art Studio. At Shelly Art Studios. Make sure to go on there. Shell Art Studio, Keaton. Shell yeah. Art, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Shell Art Studios. Make sure yeah. to go on there, show some love, support, maybe buy some prints, stickers, whatever, you know, just get on and, and show some love there. Um, we appreciate you taking the time tonight, Shelly, and, and chatting with us about what you're passionate about and what you do uh not only for uh yourself but for the fishing community and um the conservation aspect of it what a great way to uh spread the love to all the communities outside of fishing through art um so we're really grateful for you and for what you do um we also want to thank everyone taking the time to listen to the young guides podcast if you don't mind going to uh Apple Podcasts, leave us a review. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, if we're doing great, we'd love to hear it. If we're doing bad, we'd love to hear that. Tell us how we can improve, you know. Um, so, and then you can now go on Spotify, leave us a rating. And uh, don't forget to check out the youngguidespodcast.com. Um, you can learn about previous guests that we've had on, and you can learn about a little bit about Shelly's bio, a link to her website, and how to support her. So, um, yeah, make sure to check that out. Kyle, is there anything you wanted to add? Uh, again, kind of touching back on kind of what facilitated this conversation. Um, our partner over at Alaska Rod Co. came out uh, with this conservation line that Shelly um, has been a part of, creating the artwork for that, um, created the Alaska Rod Co. logo. Um, so go check that out. And again, those proceeds go towards uh, King Salmon Conservation. So go support that. The designs are super cool. Um, I'm personally going to get one myself because again, super cool goes towards a really great cause. And we appreciate um, both Matt and Shelly for uh, putting that together. Um, on that note, we also want to let you guys know um, you can go to Heather's Choice. Um, you can get 15% off of your purchase at Heather's Choice using the Young Guides 15 at checkout. We'll have that link down below. You guys can go to um, also Lucky Bug Lures. You can get 15% off using uh, the Young Guides 15 there as well. Um, and then Northern Knits. Um, Emily is still making hats. She still has some. So if you guys wanted to check that out, um, check them out. Yeah. Make sure to also, did you say Alaska Rod Co? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Make sure to also check out Lucky Bug Lure. Uh, I mean, bass fishing starting to pick up in the Pacific. Uh, I already covered Lucky, Lucky Bug. Here. Great. Sounds great. Sorry about <laughs> that. Um, sorry, I, I zoned out right there. Uh, what else do I want to add? Oh, uh, just to add on to the end here, Kyle and I are going to start picking up our guide season. So, uh, you might see a delay in episodes here and there by a day or two. We're going to do our best to keep things going. Um, but in episodes, we'll keep on rolling through the summertime. But 
we're just going to be a little busier than we were in this winter time. So uh, just bear with us and hopefully you can keep showing us the support and uh, we're so grateful for it. I can't thank you guys enough. So without you, we'd be nothing, you know? So with that being said, um, this was another episode of the young guides podcast and we will catch you on the next one.